Muslims. Born without a father. Allah said to him, Kun fayakun. He was, he said, be. And he was. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who made him. And people came from Najran, from Yemen, people came, a delegation, boasting themselves, wearing all their fancy things, and Prophet refused to accept them. They said, change into normal clothes, then you can come talk to me. So they came, they changed, and they asked him about Jesus. And Prophet gave him all the proofs. They still wouldn't believe. They said, well, don't you say that he is a spirit of Allah? The Prophet said, yes. So what do you mean by that? Isn't that a proof that it's what? He says, okay, I will tell you. Inshallah, I will tell you tomorrow. I'll give you the answer to this question. So Allah revealed to him that night that the likeness of Jesus is like the likeness of Adam. Created him from dust. He said to him, be and he was. See, people misunderstand. Because for example, sometimes, Isa is called the Ruh of Allah, the Spirit of Allah. Not Allah's Spirit, the Spirit of Allah. Like the house of Allah. Like Ibrahim is Khalilullah. Okay? Like the Prophet is Habibullah. See, people try to play sometimes with the words. But it doesn't work. You know? I mean, Musa was the one that Allah spoke to. Each prophet had something specific, subhanAllah, that Allah referred to them as. Or, and this is something beautiful. This is something amazing to show their status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we see that Jesus, born of a virgin, receives revelation, gives the Jews at the time, Ben Israel, who are, their hearts had become so hard. Just law, the law, the law. They've changed the law and they lost the spirit to the point that they, you know, they'll get, if someone's sick, they wouldn't cure him on the Sabbath. And Jesus tried to teach them that that is not what it means, man. You guys need to understand the kindness and mercy that comes with the letter of the law. So that's what he came to teach the people. And of course, people plotted to kill him. And people wanted to crucify him. But Allah saved him. That they didn't kill him, nor did they crucify him. But they thought they did. It appeared to him. Allah saved him. But Allah saved him, removed him. Allah raised them up to himself. And we know as Muslims, we believe, he will come back. Now imagine, why would we say as Muslims they will come back? Again, it would be another point of contention. We can say, no, Muhammad is going to come back. Yeah. But no, it's not. It's Jesus. Because that's the fact. If we wanted to be different than the Christians, if we wanted to make a new group, we would say, well, it's, no, you guys are wrong. It's Muhammad who will come back. Because Muhammad is the most important. But no. We speak the truth. Allah revealed that Isa will come back. Isa has unfinished business and he'll come back and he'll be an Imam and he'll be a right righteous Mahdi he'll be a righteous guided Imam so in the Quran though there's a beautiful story about Jesus on the day of judgment imagine now standing in front of Allah and Allah is asking him Oh Jesus, did you tell people to worship you and your mom as gods besides me? Allahu Akbar. You need to, does Allah need to ask him? He's Isa. But the lesson is deep because he says, I did never order anything I had no right to say. If I would have, you would have known. Oh Allah, what did Isa, order people to do? Huh? Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'budu Really Allah is my Lord first and your Lord. Worship Him. Hada Sirat al-Mustaqeem. It's the straight path. 
Who said to take him as God? Who said that he died for his sins? Allah Akbar. Is Allah incapable of forgiving? What does Allah say in the Quran? If they would only repent. How people can say that we love Jesus, he died for his sins, I'm going to heaven and commit sins openly. Just like that. And, the people, and then they'll say, well, I'm saved. You guys are sinners. We're all sinners. And Muslims will say, yeah, we're all sinners, but Allah's mercy, subhanAllah, inna rahmati ghalabat ghadabi. Allah says, my rahmah, my mercy, has overtaken over my anger. His forgiveness. Allah is the one who forgives. We just need to ask. But people, subhanAllah, they don't ask Allah. See, this, this is what Isa came to teach. This is what Jesus taught. The mercy of Allah, the forgiveness of Allah. Come back to the, the letter of the law and to the spirit of the law. But people said, no, we stick to the letter. And then some new group form and says, forget about the letter. This is Old Testament. We have new. We have now the mercy, the, the, you know, the, the love. We have gone from the curse, right? To mercy, to, to the new covenant. So we have two different extremes. And Islam is Muslims including Jesus, peace be upon him, and Prophet Muhammad and all the Prophets are calling these two extremes to what gives you life. That Allah is one. La sharika. There's no partners with Him. So yes, we love Jesus. And we love Jesus' teachings. And there's a beautiful hadith that is entitled Hadith of Shifa. And people are going to the different prophets and the different prophets are sending the people to the different prophets to for asking Allah to start the intercession to start the, the judgment and they keep reaching all, and all the prophets are shy they, they say we made you know a small mistake maybe in our life we fear Allah they're fearing Allah on the day of judgment and he reaches Isa in the, in the narration of Tirmidhi Isa is saying I fear nafsi nafsi People have taken me as God. I'm, I'm scared. Allah will punish me for this. That I did something. I, I, I didn't fulfill my message. Allah Akbar. Nafsi, nafsi. Allahu Akbar. Till they reach Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he's the one who's been granted the Maqam al Mahmud. That he will be able to ask Allah to, to start the judgment. So I mean, amazing that the picture is so different, brothers and sisters. It's so different. But now, if we, some people might say, well, okay, fine. You guys believe in Jesus, we believe in Jesus. Um, what's the difference, right? Like, uh, you know, we're saved because we love Jesus and we believe He's God and we follow Jesus. But there's a question here that we need to ask ourselves and it's a very deep question actually and that is who follows Jesus really? okay because you know claims are very empty we need to understand that people claiming things we love Jesus Jesus loves us again we said before in our lecture what does it mean to love someone? if he tells you please sit down and you're standing up and you're insisting upon standing up is this, per is this true love? If he tells you, please, have some dignity and don't act like animals, but we still insist on acting like animals. If he tells you, don't eat pigs, for example, and you insist on eating a nice pig steak, is that love? And we find different shortcuts to go around it. You know, people, oh, well, yeah, Jesus, he, yeah, he believed this and this, but Paul says this, and the other apostle said that. But you see, it's not even an issue of who says what. It's what did Jesus do? Let's look at that. Let's put, because we love Jesus. As Muslims, we love Jesus. If we love someone, what do we do? 
we follow them. We tend to copy them. We take them as examples. We tend to be like them. So we have here Jesus who was circumcised. The Muslims, we circumcised. We have Jesus who's growing a beard. And Muslims grow a beard. We have Jesus who's making wudu before praying. This is in the Bible. He's washing feet and he's washing himself before prayer. I don't, there, there might be some, but I don't know too many Christians to go and wash before their prayers. <laughs> Jesus falls on his head in the garden of Gethsemane. and he makes sujood. I don't know many, there's a few maybe group sects that still sometimes make sujood. But Muslims make sujood in every prayer. Okay, let's take it further. Jesus said, Ilah, Ilah, Lama Sabachthani, right? Ilah, Allah. People insist on calling God, God, God. He's saying Allah. Jesus is praying to Allah, yet people insist on praying to Him. Jesus is teaching the same things that Muhammad is teaching. Not eating pork, doing the worships, doing holding the law. But those who teach or tell people to abandon the law shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Allahu Akbar. So what are people doing today? Jesus obeyed the Sharia that was sent. Who obeys from the Christians today? So, he circumcised, we circumcise. He didn't eat pork, we don't eat pork. He prayed like that, we pray like So who follows Jesus? Who loves Jesus? So we should be wearing the shirt saying, I love Jesus. And on the back, I'm a Muslim. <laughs> Isn't it? Because, I mean, honestly, we need to be rational people. We can't just talk. People, people like to talk a lot. But what about the actions? This is something very important, brother sister. Because if you claim we love Jesus, and really, Jesus is someone you have to love. You can't, when you read about Jesus, you can't but love Him. You can't but love Him. And he, the Prophet is he's the closest to Jesus. Because it's the closest span of time between the two. Jesus, my brother. Allahu Akbar. He met him on the, I mean, subhanAllah, the Prophet said, Allahu Akbar, describing Jesus, describing the, uh, when the, the Dajjal will come and Jesus in the circumference in the Kaaba. Describing the details of where Jesus will come when the Mahdi will be here, on the white minarets, describing when Ju uh, the, uh, the Gog and Magog, Ajuj and Majuj will come, and what Jesus will do, describing how Jesus will defeat the Antichrist. I mean, Allahu Akbar. So when you look at it, we get a different picture, yet a very close picture to sometimes parts of the Bible describing and we find some misalignment in the beliefs of our friends and what Islam says and what the reality and what life shows about Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him. And we ask again, who loves Jesus most? The Muslims. Who follows Jesus most? Muslims. Who looks like Jesus? Muslims. Even if you take the Catholic paintings of Jesus and you look at like Sheikh Shad, for example, <laughs> it's like, hello, you know? So, I mean, this is something very important that we need to share with the world. That for us, there's no such thing as Jesus or Muhammad. There's no such thing as, uh, you know, for us, it's only Jesus and Muhammad. Jesus, we know very well, he'll be back. And we know very well that many people 
will come to 